Hey, it's Coach Tom Ferry. Thanks so much for watching. A few days ago, I asked a question on Facebook. I said specifically, what's the biggest challenge you're facing today in your real estate career? And after hundreds of responses, we came up with six of the primary challenges that people are facing. So I thought what I would do over the next few videos is go deep with you on not only the problem that people were admitting to, but giving you my solutions and some real world stories of customers that have taken the advice, taken the action, solved the problem and made a fortune in the process. So let's take a look at problem number one and see if it's relatable to you. The first biggest thing we heard was too many people are dabblers when it comes to lead generation. Now, what do I mean by dabbler? Have you ever done this before? I try a little of this and I try a little of that and I dabble here and I dabble there. You know, I, I go online and I do a little bit of work and then I dabble with some mailers, then I try an open house, but I don't do anything with any level of consistency. If that's the case, you might be a dabbler when it comes to lead generation. It reminds me of a young guy we're working with named Cody Longmire. Uh, he's in Dallas, Texas from Remax, Remax DFW. So he attended one of our trainings last May. And Cody's a guy that you know, has been selling real estate for six, seven years and has always made a, a decent income, $120,000 in commissions. When I met him in May, he was a little down on, on the, you know, down on the dumps, if you will. He had only closed six transactions. He had earned less than $26,000 in commission, so definitely not on track to achieve his goals. And we identified this problem. We talked about some of the solutions. And between June and the end of the year, not only did he sell 17 homes, which was exciting, he earned just shy of $150,000 in commissions, more money than he's ever earned selling real estate, but that's not the best part. The best part is the email I just got from him that said, hey Tom, I'm at $278,800 in commissions earned, and I've done that on 37 transactions, more than I've ever done. I want to talk about the solutions and what Cody did so you can do the same. So number one is you got to make the shift from I to C. And when I say I to C, I mean from interested to committed. You see, the reason why most people are dabblers is they're interested in this, they're interested in that, they're interested in this, they're interested in that, but they never commit to anything. When you make the shift, you see interested people, they do things when it's convenient. You know, it's fun, it's exciting, I'll try this, or just simply it's convenient. If it's not convenient, then I don't do it. Where committed people do whatever it takes every day to produce the results that are gonna cause them to achieve their goals. So the first thing is a mental shift from interested to committed. The second thing is to identify what already works. You see, if there's already acres of diamonds, metaphorically speaking, if, there's, if we know what's already working for you, my advice is do more of what already works. Do more of what's already causing you to succeed. So you go back and you look at all your previous transactions. Were they past clients? Were they referrals? Were they from an open house? Was it from an online lead generation source? There's no wrong way to attract a client, but you were doing some dabbling. Where did the dabbling pay off? Where has it paid off in the past that then we can do number three, write a 90 day plan to get the most out of what already works. So that's the, the third thing. Write out a 90 day plan to really go out and take advantage of what's already worked in the past. Then number four, I wrote down, create an accountability around doing what works. And whether that's with your office manager or an office mate or your spouse or a friend, it could be as simple as that. Letting them know, this is what's worked for me, this is what I'm committing to do, and this is what I'm gonna do every day or every week in order to achieve my goals. Now, what do we know? When you shift from interested to committed, immediately your production gets better because your mindset is better. And when your mindset is better, your energy is better and you're more attractive to customers. You see, nobody wants to work with an interested real estate agent. They wanna work with a committed real estate professional who's willing to do whatever it takes. Then secondly, again, identify what works. Number three, write down everything you wanna do in the next 90 days. What's that 90 day plan for you to get the results you desire? And then number four, create some accountabilities and follow through. When you do this, I promise you, you're gonna solve the first problem and you're gonna create a breakthrough in your performance.
Now let's take a look at the second biggest problem our clients identified, and that is failing to follow up and ultimately convert that lead into an opportunity. Now, I don't think there's a more frustrating piece of the real estate business than spending time, money, energy, and effort to attract a potential seller, to attract a potential buyer, and then fail to follow up. I mean, is there anything worse than driving down the street, that, uh, you know, an area that you know, a community that you know, and you see a home with a for sale sign that has a sold sign across the top, and you know you met that person at open house? Ah! There's nothing more frustrating than that. How do we solve the problem? It reminds me of our client, Jack Batone, Keller Williams agent, Santa Monica, California, number one agent in that office. Jack made the decision a few years ago, and it was a really good decision. He attended one of our trainings, and he got it. The light bulb went off. He said, lead follow-up is like relationship management. So, of course, I've got to put him in some kind of lead follow-up campaign. And listen, there's tens of them. I don't care which one you use. Just use one. Outlook, top producer, follow-up boss. There's tens of them. Just pick one. But here was the key distinction from Jack. He said, Tom, every time I spoke to someone, I'd qualify for a little motivation. I'd qualify for a little connection. And he said, I understand that marketing and prospecting generates leads. Lead follow-up generates appointments, signed contracts, and money. So I'm always doing my marketing. I'm always meeting new people, trying to find out who's next. But I'm mindful that most people's time frame is different from mine. I'd like them to be immediate right now, and most people need three months, six months, nine months, maybe even a couple years before the timing is right for them to buy or to sell. When he got that distinction, he made the decision to put every person into a 90-day follow-up campaign, which means as soon as he made that connection, he got a phone number, he got an email, he made all the contacts, got all the information, and then he put them in his calendar to follow up 90 days later. And guess what happens? 90 days later, when he gets on the phone with that person, here's the key, he's always bringing them new information. So, hey, Eddie, it's Jack from Keller Williams. I just wanted to follow up and let you know that in the last 90 days, there was two more sales in your area. Did you see the property at 123 Banana Street? Did you see the property down the street off Main Street? Both properties sold with multiple offers, and it looks like their sales price was near X. Did you get a chance to see those properties? Now, here's the key so far. He's always scheduling the next call. So he's always booking them 90 days out if they're a future lead. Very important. And number two, he's always bringing them relevant, interesting information, which keeps them connected to him. He's the guy with the information. He's the one that's keeping them abreast of the market, not a website. And then number three, he's always reconfirming their motivation or their timing. Now, here's what's great. Jack told me recently in a, in a quick conversation, hey Tom, listen to this. I've been following up on a Zillow lead for over two years. So let's take every 90 days, let's make that eight conversations, eight times he reached out to a person that gave him information on Zillow. He was paying for that lead. The lead came in, they decided not to buy, but two years later, eight follow-up conversations later, they listed a $2 million house for them, which he sold immediately. Was it worth it? Was it worth it to put in the calendar every 90 days and follow up with a phone call, maybe an email if you didn't reach him, maybe a personal note card if you called and emailed and just wanted to send a little extra something? Jack and countless others would tell you it's an absolute must. So if you want to solve this issue of failing to follow up, the first thing is, again, get them into some kind of application, a software solution. I don't recommend any of them. They're all good. Just make sure that you're always scheduling that call to follow up in 90 days and that you're always bringing them relevant information and reconfirming their motivation. And that could be as simple as a question like this. Gosh, I've been calling you every 90 days just to you know, touch base and check in. And I'm just curious, you know, if you do decide to do some real estate, am I your guy? A question like that reaffirms why you're following up. If they say no, what do you do? You got a choice, shift F10, delete, or continue to follow up. Now, what do you do once they get inside that 90-day cycle? That's the second solution. I'm a big fan that everything that's important in your business should be up and should be visual. 
what is more important than your hottest listing leads and your hottest buyer leads. I recommend you take a big whiteboard like this, hang it inside your office and put buyer leads and seller leads. And then real, real simple, John and Sarah, they wanna do something by 12-1. Tom wants to do something by 11-15. Yvonne and John wanna do something by 12-1. Those are my hottest buyers. So I wanna make sure that they're in front of me, I'm following up and always scheduling the next showing or sending them the next property that I want them to see or maybe getting ready to do a yikes mailer just for them. And then I've got my sellers over here. I've got Eddie on 1115, Lola and Tony, my in-laws, that's a fun one, on 12-1 and Carrie on January 3rd. So I've got the most important prospects in front of me, right in front of my face every single day so I'm never gonna fail to follow up. Now you know if you add in a little accountability, it's gonna go a long way. But I've discovered this, by just doing these two, you're gonna make sure that you're touching every lead. And Jack will tell you, and countless others will say the same, that once you decide to do this, you may have two, three, four people you need to follow up a couple times a week to reach out and get. So, you know, five on Monday, two on Tuesday, three on Wednesday, as an example. And that, that my friends, is good relationship management. It solves the failing to follow up game and absolutely will get you on more appointments, get you more listings and get you more sales. Now, long video on the next one, I'm gonna to talk to you about problems three and four, which I know you're facing. I look forward to sharing with you on that next video.